Hello and welcome to a new video about pneumatic controls. Last time we did some coordinated movement. I hope you remember. This was this was last time uh, where we said okay we are analyzing this this thing. Uh, we are anal analyzing this this diagram and see how the cylinders are moving. Uh, and then we realized okay. Oh, we understand now how this is working. So today we want to do to, to make a step further and determine how the cylinders shall move and then develop somehow the pneumatic scheme. Okay? So I already prepared a little something. You see, this is looking pretty much the same. I Again, we have two cylinders. Again, we have these two, these two control elements and so on. And then I already put in a start button and some other start condition and some other valves. These, these limiting valves, like we had here, yeah, where these limiting valves switching at the correct position here, yeah, at the correct point in time, the next valve and so on. And now, how shall the cylinders move. Huh? I want to that it looks like this, that this MM1 is some sort of clamping. Yeah? So we are clamping an item. Yeah? Then MM2 shall do something with this item. I don't know. Make a hole, punch it. Something like this. Yeah? Do something with this item. And then shall release. And after this the clamp shall also be released. So first we clamp yeah. after after it is clamped yeah, we do something yeah. emboss or ah, doesn't really matter then we are finished drilling, embossing, punching, whatever until this time this is clamped and then we are releasing also so I want to do this movement of cylinders. Hmm? This would be the goal. Okay. So when are we allowed to start? Hmm? When are we allowed to start? If BG1 is in because it's the, this is the last thing which is happening here. Yeah? B, MM1 is traveling in and BG1 is pressed. Yeah? So here this shall be pressed. And this shall be BG1. Mm -hmm. Check. Yeah? Start. Check. If this is traveling now outside, what is the next thing which shall happen? Here, MM2 shall travel outwards. So if BG2, yeah? if BG2 is getting touched, then this this must shift. Yeah? So here, this one. Ooh, blue. <laughs> this one shall be BG2. And when this is pressed, we shall apply pressure. We shall apply pressure to here. This is switching and MM2 is traveling outwards. Good. Good. Huh? Next thing, what shall happen? Huh? If we are outwards, so if we are touching BG4, huh? then we shall travel inwards again. Okay, so this must be the switching here, must, this must be BG4. Huh? This must be BG4. So this is not pressed at the beginning, so we are here. Uh, 
Okay? We are pressing the button, BG1 is inside, we are switching here, MM1 is traveling outwards, touching BG2, BG2 is here, switching this, MM2 is traveling outwards, touching BG4, BG4 is switching, pushing this back, yeah, because BG, yeah, pushing this back, this will travel inwards, and BG3, so this must be BG3 here, yeah. BG3 is now moving this back in, let's see, BG3 is this touched at the beginning, yes, because, so I have to draw it, I have to draw it operated in the beginning, in the initial phase. Label those things that it's, everything is correct. Now, BG3 coming back is operated here, yeah, BG2. Uh, MM1 is traveling inwards again, BG1 is touched again, and we are ready for the next step. Right? Haha, <laughs> yes! This is how this can be. Yeah? Let's think about it again. Yeah? So let's see. Here, at the beginning, here is pressure, fine. Yeah? Then we press the button, then here is pressure, what's on the other side? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Here is already pressure. So we have pressure here, have pressure here. This is not working at all. Ah, it looked so easy. But now we realize we have troubles here. Yeah? We have troubles here. Yeah? So immediately at the first step, goosh, issue. Huh? Let's say we handle this somehow. Yeah? Maybe we have another problem as well. Let's see. So let's say this is switching. PG2 is now operated here. PG2 is operated. This is not operated. PG4. Yeah, it's not operated, so this will move. Yeah. If this is moving, it will go outside. Operate, uh -huh, here it's working. Operate PG4, so we operate here PG4, and then we get pressure here, and here on this side, it's again pressure, because this is still under pressure here. This is still outside, so this is still pressed, and here. Uh, I press it again, and I again have here two pressures. So also this step here, ooh, is not working. Problem, problem, problem. What to do about this? Yeah. Those things. Yeah. These signals on both sides, they are called signal overlapping, okay? So this, this here is signal overlapping. This means on both sides I do have a signal, huh? they overlap each other. What can I do? Yeah? There are two different two basic different possibilities. There's one possibility is signal suppression. I can either select here different sizes of control, the control pistons inside this, yeah? the control pistons. We've talked about designs. Uh, designs, valve designs, and I do not have to have the same size here of the control piston than here. If one size is bigger of the control piston, then this signal is winning. Uh, so different areas. 
different control piston areas. This might be a solution to this. Yeah? Or here on the control lines, I can use a pressure regulating valve. Uh, I simply reduce one of the pressures in the control lines, then the higher pressure is winning. Uh, use of pressure regulating valves in control lines. This is one possibility, uh, signal suppression. So to weaken one signal, uh, simply to weaken. Uh, another possibility is signal turn off. Uh, So this is one possibility, this was the first possibility and the signal overlapping is the common topic. Signal turn off, what does it mean? If a control, these are impulse valves, right? So these are impulse valves, QM1 and QM2 are impulse valves, so it means only a short impulse is enough. It's enough. Yeah? So one possibility of turning off, so we, if we trigger just an input here yeah, and then turn it off again, this means we signal turn off, we are also fine because then it has switched and there is no risk of overlapping. Yeah. So we could use, for instance, not normal roller level, roller level uh, valves, we could lose, use roller level. With idle return. Yeah. This would be one possibility. There are roller level valves outside which in one direction they will operate and in the other direction they will simply the lever will just yield. Okay, will not operate the valve, it will just yield. Yeah. So it's in one way it has to operate the valve that the the piston can pass and in the other way it yields and let the piston pass. So if I'm doing here some roller lever valves, then this is operated only in case the piston is going outwards and after its, its full extent it will no longer operate the valve. So just by passing by the valve. So this is one possibility to turn a signal off. Roller lever with idle return. Okay, and then we have, for instance, uh, synchronized synchronized chains. Yeah? What this is, we will hear. Synchronized chain control, Taktstufensteuerung. So, this means we are only giving pressure to control lines to those control elements and input elements. They did. In this current situation, they need the pressure, yeah? synchronized chain. Yeah? So this would be the possibilities here. Yeah? Weaken one signal, signal suppression, or simply turn off the signal if it's no longer needed. Signal overlapping, typical issue. Yeah? Next time we are going to talk about how we can solve this. Yeah? So next time. We're going to talk about roller lever with idle return, how we can solve this issue in exactly this example. Yeah. yeah, this will be the next time. Today we analyzed it, we realized we have an issue, we cannot just pop, 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 draw whatever we like because it's simply not working. Yeah. Next time we try to solve it one way, with signal turn off, roller level idle, with idle return. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.